Nikola Seles. Uh, I'm coming from Serbia and I'm 18 years old. Nikola is a young man from Serbia who came to Cleveland High School for one month on a foreign exchange program. He traveled half a world away from home to experience American culture and teach us about his traditional life in the Balkan Peninsula. We have with us a young man that's been sent here from Serbia to take a look around. A country's culture lives through the soul of its people. From the food we eat to the holidays we celebrate, traditions are the source of our strength. And so one of the things that I, I want to ask Nicholas is what life in Serbia was like for you growing up? Um, I can say that I'm coming from a very uh, happy family. So I can say that I had a very uh, interesting and uh, happy childhood. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm happy now as well. 5,000 miles is not the only thing between Serbia and America. Apart from the distance, the two countries differ in defining factors and in daily life. However, Nicola's visit to our school helped us understand that we are all a lot more alike than we thought. Is there a big contrast between Serbia and yeah. here? Yeah, big contrast is uh, because everything here is huge comparing to there. Everything. Mm -hmm. uh, buildings, uh, Na big malls. Yes, um, number of people is uh, um, big. Number of people is here. Mm -hmm. As the end of the year approaches, both Serbia and America can be found decked in Christmas and New Year's decorations. Yeah, we celebrate Christmas. What do we do? Uh, we, we gather the family, whole family, for lunch, and we prepare uh, food. Serbian families like Nikola celebrate Christmas on January 7th. As the majority of the country is Orthodox Christian, they not only use this holiday to spend time together, but to honor the birth of Jesus Christ. Among the younger generations, however, New Year's Day is always the most anticipated time of year. My favorite holiday uh, is New Year, that day, 31st December. Uh, we celebrate that, that day because it's the biggest um, day in Serbia for all people. We, we are partying all the night, drinking, hanging out, yeah. Serbians take pride in their traditional dance, Kolo, which they dance during festival times and at important events. Of course, we have uh, the name of that dance is Kolo. Kolo, so the people uh, stay in the circle and dancing. When you play our traditional dance, uh, you wear uh, special clothes for that. Yeah. I mean, you have uh, special shoes, uh, dress for girls and for men, and some hats for, for men. So, yeah. Kolo is a traditional collective folk dance where a group of people holding each other by the hands or around the waist dance in a circle. There is almost no movement above the waist. Each region has at least one unique Kolo. In Serbia and all around the world, dance is an essential part of celebration. There can't be traditional dance without traditional music. Music adds essence to our lives, from classical Serbian tunes to modern techno and rap. Though Americans and Serbians listen to the melodies in two completely different languages and perhaps dissimilar rhythms, music impacts us all as human beings. We have, we have all, all those kinds of music as well. And we have uh, also our traditional music. So, different, different rhythms. Serbian music is distinct in its unique sounds and characteristics. Song epic poetry has been a huge part of Serbian music for centuries. Long poems are typically accompanied by a one-string fiddle called the guzzle and concern themselves with themes from history and mythology. Today, Serbian folk music is both rural and urban and can be typically heard during kolo dances accompanied by instrumental music 
made most often with an accordion. And music in Serbia is not like what you find in America, and neither is their food. Nothing adds flavor to culture like a country's traditional foods. Uh, we eat mm, meat, much meat, uh, potatoes, salads, fruits. We try to be healthy. That's why I'm so skinny. We have uh, our traditional food named uh, Aivar. Uh, I, I'm not sure how it, how you make it, but it it's our traditional food. I'll I'll ask my grandma and come back and explain. Most people in Serbia will have three meals a day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, with lunch being the largest. However, traditionally only lunch and dinner existed. Breakfast was introduced in the second half of the 19th century. Food preparation is a strong part of the Serbian family tradition. We have stores when we go outside the school. We don't have a place in school like you have. Yes. So you, you get food for lunch, for snack. We must go outside and buy food. Serbian students like Nikola buy lunch and snacks outside of school, unlike our customary cafeteria. They go to local food stores and also eat at some American fast food restaurants found in Serbia. We have uh, KFC, McDonald's, Starbucks. Apart from hanging out at the neighborhood burger joint or coffee shop, youngsters in Serbia find entertainment in many ways. So. If you are going to throw a party on, on Saturday night yeah. and you invite 10 people, yes. do 100 people show up? Uh, of course. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Always same problem. It's just like here in America. Just, just same. Yeah. We're only inviting you. You can, you can bring your girlfriend, but don't tell anybody yeah, else. Yeah, uh, but my girlfriend will tell to someone else. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you, you never can predict how many people will come. Yes. Whether in Serbia or across the world in the United States, teenagers like Nicola can always be found partying and having a good time. Our happiness is in our culture and in the things that we have grown accustomed to doing. So ne some things will never change. Kids are kids. <laughs> a great ambassador for his country, Nikola shared his Serbian culture and helped us realize that despite our differences, we have more in common than we think. No matter where we were born, what holidays we celebrate, or what foods we eat, tradition will always be the source of our strength. <laughs>